I'm Matt, and welcome to The Good Trouble Show. Today, we have a really kind of a last-minute show that we put together with Washington, D.C. journalist Matt Laszlo uh, joining us uh, with the latest congressional comments about upcoming hearings and this uh, alien video that, that apparently Representative Luna may have seen. So uh, we'll, we'll see what she has to say about that. But first, uh, please hit the subscribe and thumbs up button on YouTube. You can also find us on Twitter at Good Trouble Show and all other social media platforms at The Good Trouble Show. Uh, leave a comment, share, like, give a thumbs up and subscribe, all that good stuff. It actually helps us out as far as uh, YouTube organically promoting our stuff to people that don't, that don't follow the UAP topic. All those things, uh, they really work. So uh, you can also find us on your uh, favorite podcasting platform. Search for The Good Trouble Show, subscribe and leave a review, hopefully a good one. And uh, of course, we always need your help keeping the lights on. You can become a supporter of The Good Trouble Show by going to www.patreon.com forward slash The Good Trouble Show. And literally for the price of a Starbucks coffee, you can support our work. Finally on YouTube, Super Chats are open and are a great way to show your financial appreciation for our work. And speaking of which, I want to thank our financial supporters on Patreon and YouTube. And of course, our chat moderators who volunteer their time to make sure that the chat doesn't go awry. Anyway, uh, thanks for everyone, as always, for supporting our show. So uh, today's guest has written stories for Vice, Rolling Stone, Wired, and The Daily Beast, covering the political beat in Washington, D.C. since 2006. Man, that's a long time. He has been on fire tracking down politicians and getting them on the record about the recent news on UAPs. Of course, everyone knows it as UFOs. Uh, so uh, everyone, please welcome journalist uh, Matt uh, Laszlo. Matt, how are you, man? Who fucking knows? Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me back. I don't even know what day it is over here. <laughs> I, I, I think this is like, uh, I think this is appearance number four for you. You're, you're like a regular. Yeah. Thanks. Keep having me back. I, Until well, I mess up and then you banish me for life. <laughs> You, you 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 get a perma you get a perma ban uh, yeah we, we we don't want to do that we we like supporting your work and uh, and and of course we'll plug it at the end but but I am a a subscriber to uh, askapoll.com I encourage everyone to subscribe you're man you're just you're killing it out there it's just amazing work hey all I do and this is what I love about the ask a poll community is just you all send me your questions because I got too much to do and I just ask them to lawmakers and then sometimes news happens yeah sometimes it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> because these lawmakers are terrible on this topic but that's why we got to keep the pressure up to keep uh -huh. them uh, engaged on it a hundred percent. So uh, speaking of lawmakers, how, how are things at the swamp? Have you seen uh, Dr. Sean uh, Kirk quadcopter lurking, lurking around there? Or is he off at uh, his new nuclear gig? He's it's so interesting with uh, Sean Kirkpatrick of Arrow because we did not hear very much from him when he had actual power. When he was the director of Arrow, you know, he was barely mum. And then now that he's out of uh you know, government service. Now he's, oh, I've got all this stuff to say. And he's really like, you know, lashing out at lawmakers, just like in lazy, you know, like tropish ways, which like they're solid critiques you can have of every lawmaker, every committee, every caucus. Um, we're not seeing any of that from him. You know, he's just doing ad hominems, not being specific. Um, and yeah, I wish he would call out people by name. Or if he would like do his job and let us know what those couple hundred objects are that Senator Jill Brand, uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand from New York, she just yesterday we dropped it on askpoll.com. She just said when she was out in Nevada, her biggest concern when meeting with the Air Force, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, her biggest concern is all what she said. Well, yeah, they're UAPs, but drones and other things hovering over sensitive military sites regularly. So Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, shut the fuck up and deal with that problem. <laughs> like, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what's. I mean, Kirkpatrick, man, he's, he's like really turned into a, a total clown. But I mean, I guess he's been a clown all along. But yeah, the only thing that I can figure out is is David Grush, you know, really called him out, and and of course he got caught in, we'll just say um, maybe a nice, well, you know, saying lie, but stretching the truth. And it, it seems like ever ever since he left, he's been on this kind of sort of image re, uh, rehabilitate, uh, sorry, rehabilitation tour. Uh, I mm-hmm. don't know. And when the other thing I to kinda, think of, go ahead. I kind of get it. I mean, cause if you look even like, this is what I go through every day at, on Capitol Hill. When I ask certain lawmakers about this issue, like what the uh, former chair of the foreign relations committee um, in the Senate, uh, Jim Rich of Idaho, what he told us last year at askpoll.com is, I do not read UFO stories. Wow. So, okay, so now we have Senator Gillibrand confirming that there's a bunch of shit flying over sensitive nuclear sites that we do not know what they are. So, sir, those are fucking UFOs. And if you don't read UFO stories, no wonder uh, <laughs> these, whatever it is, it feels like they have no pressure to stop hovering over um these sensitive sites but with Kirkpatrick it's this rehabilitation tour where I get it like he's trying to tell people like hey 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 I'm not x-files you know I'm not this so he's literally falling into the tropes and the traps that have been obliterated if you look at polls by the American public and if you look at a congress actually taking these issues seriously um And remember about this time last year, U.S. airspace was invaded by a Chinese spy balloon. And then just a couple of weeks ago, there was another object that they announced they didn't know. And I brought that up to Gillibrand. She's on the Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. She hadn't even heard about it. So, I mean, there are very serious issues. And for Kirkpatrick just to be this dismissive and to, um, yeah, like try to get a gig on CNN or whatever... Dude, you have no credibility. Your job was to create a safe space for whistleblowers in the Air Force right. to tell these stories. And Congress says you didn't do your fucking job. So shut the fuck up, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, well and the thing the thing that's crazy about it is, so he's still in government. He's supposedly retired, but he's moved on to DOE. If you, if you stop and think, and think about it, I can't imagine how everything he has said post retirement uh, is it didn't go through some kind of like DOPS or clearance process, which then says to me, okay, well, we know that DOPS or takes a long, uh, long time. You know, we've heard that that that's what's holding up David Grush's uh, op-ed. Mm-hmm. But so, did he go through DOPS or did it get fast tracked? I, I, I find it just incredibly difficult to, to think that Kirkpatrick is not being given a green light to say the crazy shit he's saying. I like, I, I, I would, because if he were, if he were that, if he were going that rogue, I would think that he would likely get fired from his, uh, his gig at, uh, what is it? Oak Ridge National Laboratories. That, that's what I don't understand. Well, one thing you said there that tripped me up is him going rogue. I don't, that could be the case, but it kind of feels like at this point, he's carrying the Pentagon's talking points more and more almost, you know? Um, Yeah. So I'm curious again, I have more questions than answers. And so I'm going to push lawmakers on that because I could see, um, the vetters uh, in the government fast tracking something coming from a former director like that would make sense to me you know former head of the cia their book's going to get out there a lot quicker than that agent in the field etc when they retire and so that all makes clunky bureaucratic terrible sense to me um but why grushes has been held up i don't know so i need to fish around on that um, and yeah, from everything we know about Kirkpatrick, yeah, it makes total sense that he would embrace a double standard for yeah. a whistleblower who is no respect for, and whistleblowers in turn have no respect for him. So, hey, you broke Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, really? Senator Literally. Rubio, we had uh, one-on-one with Senator Ru- Rubio at askapoll.com a couple weeks ago, and he was literally like, basically admitted 
we created arrows so we didn't have to do this. <laughs> He's like, I really wish we were getting these answers from Arrow because that's why we freaking set it up. Right. Um, so the frustration is boiling over. I'm curious, and this is what I'll be watching in the future, because right now with whistleblowers not trusting Arrow, well, what good is Arrow? <laughs> um, right. It's only as good as the information they're getting from in the field. And so he might have inadvertently killed it um we'll see depending upon what happens in the next few months and whether the next full-time director can regain the trust of um the service members basically and uh even airline pilots but let's start with the air force because from what we hear there's a lot of pilots out there with a lot of stuff to tell they just don't trust you and now through that they don't trust your agency good work bro Good work. <laughs> good, yeah, good, good work. Uh, good work indeed. And and I I completely agree with you as far as what I meant about the rogue part was. So when he was in Arrow, he was staying inside his little box, and then when he left, he he just you know completely went haywire. And but, but way, I do I do agree. Me, sorry to cut you off, but he kind of went rogue when he was at Arrow because of that Harvard Review thing or that Harvard. Scientific Journal thing. Remind me. Remember that. Didn't he do a scientific journal, like op-ed pondering whether there is extraterrestrial life out right, there? Right, right, right. He had that whole thing, which I've never interviewed the guy. And hey, if you're listening or if one of your aides is, hey, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I talk to a lot of skeptics. I talk to everyone on this issue. Um, and we don't know who you are. So come on <laughs> our podcast or come on the Good Trouble Show and... Yeah, stop hiding behind well, your digital pen. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I I totally forgot about that, but it totally makes sense. But I, I you think... You just made me think, wait, did I make that up? <laughs> no, no he, he did. Or if he did it, it was right after. But I think the larger point is it appears he's going rogue, but I think what, what you pointed out is accurate. These are all Pentagon talking points. He, he is holding the water for these guys. And also going back to what you were speaking about with, with the whistleblowers, we interviewed on our show, we had former nuclear launch control officer, David Chindley. We had uh, uh, former above ground nuclear uh, police officer, uh, Mario Woods, I think is his last name. Sorry, it's, it's been a while. But every single one of these folks, uh, including uh, Robert Salas as well, they had absolutely nothing good to say about the interview process with Arrow. Uh, Sh uh, Shindley in, in particular, he got into it with Kirkpatrick. I think it was something along the lines of, he, he told Sean, look, uh, if you rely on the scientific method, you're never gonna figure this out because all of this stuff mm -hmm. operates out of our, our known laws of physics. And Kirkpatrick just kind of went ape shit and started talking about wormholes and all of that but i to be honest i hey, hey, hey don't knock wormholes it's way <laughs> over my head but i'm here for any like black hole wormhole discussion right. i'm all about it right yeah but but anyway the, you know, the long and short of it is no whistleblower i spoke to or if the, if you don't even want to consider them a whistleblower but people that were testifying to arrow they had nothing good to say uh, they they weren't recording the interview. They were taking notes, which is going to lead me to my really? next question. Yeah, no, they weren't doing oh, any I didn't of know that, that shit. Yeah, no, I record everything in part because I'm you know, I start as a public radio reporter, but mostly because I'm a failed motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust myself. I yeah. go back to the tape. Well, every every single one of every single person that I spoke to, that was one of the first things I asked. Did Kirkpatrick record the interview or one of Kirkpatrick's underlings? Huh. And they asked, and every single time they said, "Nope, we're just taking yeah. notes." So something tells me when this when Kirkpatrick's historical report comes out, I'll bet it's going to be huh. an F because there's going to be so much stuff left out of there. One one person that testified to Kirkpatrick. Huh characterized the interview as they really didn't care. They were there going through the motions. They were there because they had wow. to be there. Uh, I, it's just, it's some crazy I am, stuff. I am a little curious now if that just might be, you know, because the whole world of classification is another universe. I'm not allowed inside of the skiffs, you know, the sensitive, compartmentalized, whatever. 
uh, information centers. Um, but like in there, I know lawmakers inside skips at the capitals, lawmakers can take notes uh, during briefings, but then those notes get locked and kept inside that skip. So I would get that they wouldn't want recordings to get out, but they also have skips to hold stuff like that, especially for the historical record. And so while I get it on one level, why they wouldn't have a recording, that also makes no fucking sense. <laughs> like you guys are yeah. behind the veil. And if you do your job, nothing behind that veil is going to get out. And so, yeah. 100%. I, I think he had marching orders and he is just doing doing the bidding of of his Pentagon or CIA overlords or, or, or but whatever. But here's the thing. Uh, I wonder, like part of me, part of me feels like, yeah, maybe Lloyd Austin knows about this and like he's part of those conversations. Part of me is like, wait, maybe everyone at the Pentagon viewed Kirkpatrick as this little twit and he lived up to it, didn't <laughs> actually take the whistleblower seriously, which would empower you because the right. brass is going to listen to the whistleblowers. They're not going to listen to your little PhD ass. I say that as a professor at Johns Hopkins and elsewhere. Like, no. And so I'm curious if, like, in the Pentagon, and the Pentagon is a world of itself. My dad served in Vietnam, and he was in town a few years back. And we went out. He, we went to the Pentagon City, oh, which is this little community right next to the Pentagon where a lot of military people live or whatever. And throughout that whole area, you just see all these people in dress uniform or whatever. And my dad had to finally stop one of these uh, soldiers and be like, hey, how do you not spend your whole day just saluting? He's like, I've never seen this much like high up military folk. Yeah. Right. And the guy was like, well, actually within the Pentagon itself, it's a no salute zone. So they don't have to salute unless they see like the top, top brass. But that's where within that, other other world of Washington DC, the Pentagon. I'm curious if maybe there was like a handler for Kirkpatrick that he felt like so he had go. a conduit for folks higher. So like he might not even have had any clout, not, might not have been listened to by anyone uh in the Pentagon. And he kept getting pressure from lawmakers, just kept having to go down there and push him uh lawmakers remember this we broke the news senator warner the chair of the senate intelligence committee and uh vice chair rubio at the end of last year they had a classified briefing with kirkpatrick solely to push him on whistleblowers so you've lost all your credibility dude yeah like them yeah. and then senator rounds went separately and senator Gillibrand went separately all pushing him on this specific issue yeah. and then he comes out and says oh they're nut jobs well According to the Congress that created you, you failed at your very basic test. So you know nothing because you were supposed to listen to whistleblowers. But no, here you are preaching down to whistleblowers. Shut the yeah. fuck up, man. Yeah, I'm he's, the he's, patience he's, for that asshole. <laughs> yeah, Kirkpatrick, he is one arrogant son of a bitch. That is for sure. Yeah. I, uh, before, and I'm uninformed. Yeah. Your no, what's job, like? My job as a reporter is to record what people say. Right. And to and not just record them, but I listen to them. I want to understand them. And I think that's the big difference between um, me and a lot of folks. Like, it sounds like Kirkpatrick knows everything and he's got a lot to say. Well, <laughs> shove your PhD up your ass. Because you know right. what? I've learned in my years of reading hundreds of books, biography on every U.S. president, you know, interviewing thousands of lawmakers over 18 years. And learned how little I know. And so all I have is more questions. So like, good on you, dude, um, for having a big brain. But fuck the big brain on Brad. Uh, you dipshit. <laughs> I, I, could, I don't so like some I, of my coworkers in the media and in uh, academia. <laughs> of, of course. When, when I had first heard that he was going to become the director of Arrow, I, people that I spoke to in... DOD or IC that had worked with him in the past and previous jobs or whatever, 
literally they had nothing good to say about the guy. He, he apparently wants, always wants to be the smartest guy in the room. That's like his number one priority. Which means you're the biggest dipshit in the room. You're the biggest dipshit. But he, I, I think he, I don't know if he but just I mean, doesn't have- the person ask, talking the most. Right, yeah. The person yeah. talking the most. You're not right. the wisest. You're the fucking fool. Yeah, and, and of if course- If we go it, by the biblical standard. <laughs> <laughs> when, and it, of course, it seems like he, he's lived up to this thing. But the thing that has completely blown me away, and I'm curious what you think about this, or if you've heard other, or heard people in Congress comment about this, is so he goes off the reservation if we want to call it that or rogue or whatever which I, i'm in agreement it's it's not by chance he, he's doing this with approval but he he goes with this whole set of talking points which oh by the way all the organized debunkers the debunkers as i like to call them they're pushing the same thing uh, this this guy stephen greenstreet at at new york post you, you know what they need they should fire greenstreet and hire you on that beat you are an actual reporter you actually are doing a really great job you would be an I asset to me. for the post <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just saying, man. I, it's... I actually, I do have a, one of my former interns. I uh, oh. wrote his reference letter and all that, and he's the Albany bureau chief for the Post, so good on him. Oh, and one of my other interns, he uh, published a big feature in the Washington Post yesterday on the 70-year anniversary of the Puerto Rican shooting in the uh, on the House floor. Wow. So my interns are going places. I don't know what happened with me i'm a failure i'm still here <laughs> i I, my own thing <laughs> i i beg to differ man i i think i think you're you're in a league of your own and that is a compliment that that is for sure but that's also the beauty of basketball because i did a few years back i um was co-owner of a startup publication but then the funder pulled the plug after a year and so that's kind of where i got the idea for basketball because i've always hated the corporate money in um journalism but there's no way around it we're america right. we're a capitalist society but it'd be interesting for me because i'm a wired magazine correspondent where i'm like very hard on the tech industry but then i'm also a public radio correspondent and every hour we stop and thank one of the big tech firms for their funding <laughs> you know <laughs> and so because my funding has always come from everywhere right it's come from nowhere and right. so the beauty of basketball is I wanted to start a news outlet from the ground up. And every time we grow a little bit, that's, I call us the people powered press corps because we're nothing without our audience and our subscribers. And um, it's also a big fuck you to the system, to the corporate media system um, and to politicians, because guess what? You guys are their constituents. And when I ask your questions, it actually gives me cover because who am I? I'm just some, dipshit reporter um you all are the voters who hold their careers in the balance don't yeah. forget it yeah copy that so so going back to uh, sean kirk quad yeah sorry for that no no I, no dude I, <laughs> it's why well, i love having you on man it's 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 always so much fun so, so a lot of this stuff didn't surprise me coming out of his mouth we we spoke about how david grush totally Show, displayed to the whole world what you know what this guy is like but the thing that totally blew me away is he picks up he repeats these talking points from Stephen Greenstreet who's a video editor slash uh, propagandist on at, at the um, uh, was it New York Post saying essentially that all of these senators congressmen and women their staff have all been duped by a bunch of UFO enthusiasts, as they like to call them. And I, it just blows me away. It's like, how stupid does this guy think we are? And, how, and clearly he's, he's throwing his, his, his uh, lawmakers under the bus. It just blows me away. That's where, even like this week we put out, um, you know, we broke the news on bodies from Luna, my source, told me, hey, Luna and Matt Gates had a uh, briefing where they saw a video of bodies. So like, I don't know that, I'm just told that. What do I do? I take that information and live on tape, <laughs> live at askthepoll.com, I ask Congressman Luna. And she goes, that's classified material, I can't um, discuss it. I'm, my ears immediately perk up because I'm like, 
she didn't say you're you're fucking full of shit why would you ask me if i saw bodies yeah. which if i asked many other lawmakers that would be their reaction and so then matt gates the next day confirmed it um saying that they had the meeting again not disputing what i reported in there so now i'm just filled with questions but seeing how people are kind of on both sides of this issue reacted to that i'm like i don't know how, and i guess you know people take that information and plug it into their worldview which is why i love my worldview i'm curious i just have more questions but right. i did not report anything definitive this week i reported well it's Kind of the meeting's confirmed. Um, now, now we just have to find out who gave the briefing, where it was, all that stuff. But that's why, for me, covering this issue and covering Congress is five dimensional chess. And you've got to take the long view because I always remind people Democrats, you know, no matter your politics, Democrats, the whole party really cares about health care. They really care about universal health care. It took them a hundred years of pushing that policy to fall short of universal health care when they got Obamacare. <laughs> like that right. is that's something they care about and they couldn't do it. Um, and so <clears throat> that long view really matters, especially with all the layers on this issue. And so it was interesting the other night, I got into a spat with Green Street because he was yelling at everyone being like, <clears throat> what do you mean bodies? And then I'm like, no, no, no. They meant they... There's a language that we use. Like they know when I'm asking them about crypto and when I'm asking about UAPs. <laughs> and so me and lawmakers, and one thing, because I've been there 18 years, I've been there longer than I think 70% of Congress. You know, I meet these lawmakers at freshman orientation if I haven't already met them on the campaign trail. And so I, I can break news with a wink from Senator Warner. Senator Warner has known me his whole career in Washington. And sometimes when he comes out of a classified briefing and I ask a question, he doesn't say anything because he knows my mic is running, but he'll signal to me with his eye. And I'm like, oh, now I know that. That right. has been confirmed. And so, yeah, Green Street. But what I did, even though I snapped him around digitally after nice. uh, the little gnat bit me too many times, but then the next day, I linked to his tweet in our post because fuck the pettiness. <laughs> like, whatever. You're right. there. And one thing I do appreciate about him is the skepticism he brings to the issue. Like, we get good questions from him. And one thing he's helpfully pointed out is that we've seen some members of the UAP caucus not be precise with their language, which... Sometimes I'm not precise with my language, you know, even though I understand politics and political ease, um, I aspire to never talk in that. Like my audience is way outside the beltway, um, but I need to understand the beltway acronyms and all the BS to be able to discuss it. Um, and so while I get him pushing lawmakers to be more precise, I also do kind of enjoy that um, they're not the highly polished politicians. And I think that's why they're at the table on this issue, because they're very much more in line with average Joe American public from what we see from polls um, than they are with the uh, stodgy stuffed elite who run this <laughs> town. That, that is for sure. That's one of the reasons I love Burchett. I'm a Democrat, so I don't yeah. uh, don't agree with him politically on much. But man, I have such respect for him that that he he'll speak truth to power. He has no filter in many ways. He's just what mm -hmm. you see is what you get. Uh, I would love to have him on this show anytime. Uh, so going back to to Kirkpatrick, are you hearing anything <clears throat> in terms of when we might expect this historical review or, or historical record of whatever this book report he was going to do? I'm, I don't have much hope in it being any good. Someone someone told me the interviews at Askapol dot com I, it might have been senate intel chair warner might have said that it was in the told us that it was in the final stages of um review i'm curious because next week is state of the union address 
So that kind of sucks all the energy out of all the agencies or whatever, because each agency is spending all their time giving the president the exact precise words and everything they want included in the speech. And they send reams and reams in and then it gets cut down and then they fight, you know, and so that's where the focus is on a lot of this stuff uh, or a lot of this town. And so I'm curious if it doesn't, for one, like it might come out on Friday because they might try to like bury it in all the other news from State of the Union address. Or the administration might like want that to really be the focus this week and the lead up to it and then after it. And then we might see other agencies start dropping other reports like this. Um, And again, like this, this year has been a very, so this Congress, strange Congress, you know, I, it wasn't on my bingo card, but Congress, instead of shutting the government down, Congress shut itself down. Like, uh-huh. whoa, I've been here 18 years. I did not know that was uh, possible. But when they went speakerless, and now, like, Speaker Johnson, he's still getting his training wheels on, and that's taking a lot longer than he thought. So that's sucking a lot of air out of this town. But there's this constant threat of government shutdowns hanging over everything. There was maybe going to be a shutdown last night. Now there's maybe going to be one next week if they don't um, reach this deal. And so with those constant threat of government shutdowns, that sends ripples through all these agencies. And in intangible ways, I'd say we're kind of seeing that like this, the start of this Congress, like the State of the Union is usually done in February. This time it's in March. Like it feels like this congress is still you know coming out of its slumber from the recess i think it might feel like that because this congress might be much more focused on its own re-election than on policy probably Um, but yeah this weird is just this year is just feeling weirder and weirder um and i don't know if they're ever going to get their legislative groove on it's an election year so i'm not hoping on it um yeah we'll see yeah, well, and Washington's and, a shit show. Yeah, as as always, some things never never change. It's just a a a a what's uh, what's the word? Just it's just kind of a, a a known fact of nature. So so speaking of Congress and and passing legislation, have you spoken to uh, let's say like Rubio, Gillibrand, Hein Heinrich, or Young uh, to find out is there going to be a Schumer? UAP amendment 2.0 and would they would they try to put back in the things that were stripped out such as the the uh, uh, what is it the UAP board yeah. in the White House eminent domain all that kind of stuff what are you hearing I, I was able to just start fishing around on that this week and I talked to one of those members um, we it's one of the exclusives I have yet to drop at askapoll.com but it's nice. with a uh, sender sender Todd Young Real short, real short interview, but telling because as I remember from my reporting last year on it, that effort, that amendment was really negotiated between Senator Schumer and his team and uh, Senator Mike Rounds from South Dakota, a Republican. All the other four uh, members on that didn't really take active roles in those negotiations, in part because they You know, Democrats trusted Schumer in his office to do the negotiating for them. And then um, on the Republican side, you know, talking to Senator Rubio, the vice chair of the Senate Intel Committee, he said he was just never a part of that because they empowered rounds to do that for them. So asking Young, he's like, yeah, I haven't really heard of it. But then when I described that to him, I was like, is that because this is kind of being handled by Schumer and rounds? Like, that's what happened last year. And he goes, yeah, that'd be a fair summation. So that's the breaking news. I think that one line is all I got from uh, (laughs) Senator Young on it. But this week, Senator Gillibrand, in our exclusive with her, she mentioned new sensors or radars that she wants included in this year's NDAA. Um, So it's definitely on lawmakers' minds. And don't forget, folks, with the NDAA, that's the National Defense Authorization Act. It doesn't fund the military. It's got funding components in it, but it, it authorizes all the funding and the military industrial complex and, you know, our brothers and sisters, our troops on the ground. 
So it has to pass annually. So we know that, especially this year, with members of the Congressional UAP Caucus in the House, they're really focused on that and addressing it. I think or, uh, Congressman Eric Burleson, he mentioned that he's got some tweaks and stuff that he wants on it. Because remember, going into last year's NDAA, when they were in conference, um, or when both chambers had passed it, they hadn't started conference yet. But I mentioned it to members of the House UAP caucus, the Schumer Amendment in the Senate, and some hadn't even heard of it. Hmm. Because we, as much as Washington's its own universe, and then the Capitol's its own universe, the House and the Senate are their own two different universes. And so I think now with the Congressional UAP caucus, knowing about this ahead of time, they're active now, you know, either crafting their own amendments or working on tweaks to that one. And so, yeah, I'm really intrigued. And especially because historically that's been such a nonpartisan, nonpolitical uh, measure, the NDAA, even though last year Republicans lobbed it up with a bunch of um, kind of for the first time ever with a bunch of abortion language, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter, anti that, et cetera, the exclusivity or what is it? Gendered inclusion, blah, blah, blah. What are the three letters they always throw around that I can't only they up. talk about and no one else? Oh, right, right. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion or whatever. Um, and so that was interesting because that did kind of suck a lot of the air out of those negotiations. Like when the Senate sat down with the House to negotiate a bipartisan NDAA that eventually passed, you know, soared through both chambers senators came in there being like hey we have to kill all of your social policy riders well these house republicans were like fuck you fight us on abortion we'll do that publicly and so i think that gave the house extra leverage and so i could see schumer and his people not really having much clout or uh chits left when it came to his actual amendment because they might have already spent a bunch of political capital up front. So now we're in the midst of an actual election year. So don't hold your breath too much this year. I, I, well, well, Next well, Congress, maybe. Maybe. But well, I don't know. It's yeah. it's on the table. It's, it's still going to be a hot issue. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. Well, well, and let's let's hope Republican Congressman Mike Turner can keep his grubby little hands off of the thing and and, and not f it up for I'm everybody. Still in, I'm still investigating whether it was him or not, because I have great relationship with um, the top Democrat on House Intel, Jim Himes, and Himes tells me he's, the issues never come up with him and Turner, and I hear from other people on the committee that. UAP just doesn't come up. So I'm curious. And so for one, that could mean that Chair Turner is just totally empowered on this issue because no one else on the committee is just not something he talks about publicly with the other members. So he could really be pulling the strings in the background or he doesn't care about it either. And it could be House Armed Services Committee task because during the NDAA, we had that one public conference committee, Askapol got an exclusive with task chairman Mike Rogers from Alabama, and he knew about the issue. He knew about the Schumer's UAP amendment. What he told us was telling because he knew about it for one, but then he said, we think it's redundant. And so you could tell that there were changes he was working on. So again, I'm still fishing around and actually like on my list was right now just <laughs> 10 stories to fish around on this week. Uh, one of the top ones is looking for Rogers and other members of Hask because my gut kind of tells me that they might be the ones who are more active on this. Um, but not to say don't take your eyes off Turner. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep two eyes on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep, keep one eye on him and the other eye on whoever's passing money from Lockheed Martin into his pocket. Exactly. So that's what I, exactly. that's what I would suggest. Okay. Let, I know your time here is limited. Uh, so I, I want to play some of the excellent clips that you've recorded of your chasing down these, these lawmakers and getting them on record and, yeah, man, let's uh, let's uh, let's start with the first one we have from Senator uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, who has been a guest on our show. Folks, if you haven't seen it, go back oh, to really? YouTube. And awesome. Yeah, she's great. I, I, and, you, and you discussed UAPs. Yes. That's fucking awesome, because people are saying, you know, and people in the uh, UAP space, UFO space are saying like, oh, Gillibrand's become a turncoat. I think mm. she's walking that delicate line because she's she is. Intel Committee and Armed Services Committee. Exactly. So she cares about the issue, um, but she definitely sees it differently uh, than a lot of people in the community. But a lot of people are like, oh, very dismissive of her. Of her. And I'm like, guys, she's kind of your only hope in the Senate. Yes. Yeah. Like, she's the only senator really active on this. Like, Rubio is curious on it from a distance like he's more focused on arrow now um and i'm still pushing him to see i mean because he came out when grush dropped his bombshell last year rubio and gillibrand came out hot and heavy <clears throat> and i'm curious what they've been told behind closed doors that now they're like what do you mean we were hot and heavy like, <laughs> like that is, i'm like no 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 no. i recorded you it's on our site like there's been a change. I'm just trying to figure out where that change was. Where that changed. Well, and yeah, and the thing is too, and I think we've spoken about this too, like people in members of the House of Representatives, they they can be much more open about what they're talking about. Obviously not crossing any lines that would would reveal classified info, but the senators in my view, they are a lot more buttoned up. And especially considering that she sits on both Senate Intel and Senate Armed Services, she has to be careful about what she says. She is yeah. legally liable if she has an unauthorized oh, yeah. disclosure of classified information. And I can't they imagine- They sign away their life. Oh yeah, I, I can't imagine all the stuff that, other things outside of this that she has to keep straight in her head, other classified things. So I completely understand well, why she'd be careful. We broke news with her on askapoll.com. We have different verticals. We have our UAP vertical, Okay. Uh, which is our o OGs. Yeah, but then yeah. we have drug policy one where we broke news on cannabis this week. Uh, you know, Senator Fetterman disagreeing with Biden on marijuana. But then we broke news with Gillibrand on crypto. She's got a new stablecoin bill that she's crafted with Republican Senator Cynthia Lummis of Wyoming. And so remember, these senators and even uh, these House members, like they have so much on their plates. And Gillibrand's been really big on pressing the Pentagon and the military itself on cleaning up their sexual harassment stuff. And so she has to walk a delicate line because, I mean, she went and played hardball with the Pentagon on sexual harassment and um, sexual abuse, the culture in the military. And um, so she's got to pick her battles with them. You know, I don't defend any lawmaker. I just try to describe what, what it's like from their position. 100%, 100%. I, her staff is great. I can tell you that they are some of the smartest people I've ever dealt with. They track this topic. They know it's not China. They know it's not Russia. The, as far as the non-prosaic stuff, I would say is a fair characterization. Uh, so let's play, let's play this clip from Senator Gillibrand and Matt from Ask a Poll. Okay. On the record, yeah. Well, what the hell was that thing flying over U.S. airspace? <laughs> Which one? Just recently. Oh, like, I didn't see it. They announced it in the past. It just came up for like a day in my feed and then went away. But I don't know about it. It's so intriguing. I'll look into it. Because it kind of reminded me of... So I'm very concerned, oh, yeah. this on the record, I'm very concerned about um, UAPs, particularly um, drone technology, um, aircraft technology, that is constantly around our military sites. And it's it's a form of ubiquitous surveillance that causes grave concern for me. And we need to know, is it Russia, China? China is it Russia, China, Iran, or other? Because yeah. it's highly relevant that we can function 
uh, as uh, as military bases, but also it's important that we can protect secrets, and it's yeah. important that we have uh, air superiority and domain awareness. Yeah. All those things are of high concern for me. Since and I'm hoping that in this year's defense bill, we can add more yeah. resources for, for sensors that and detection. Yeah. I'll ask you more about that next week. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Not wild. How are you? A little relieved? <laughs> Good to see you. Are the Republicans here or there? McConnell's chief. That's um, Mitch McConnell's chief of staff. I don't know. Cause this... <laughs> are you relieved that your boss is doing this? He's like, Hell probably yeah. over there. That's what I thought. <laughs> three, three, three. Yeah. So, so you, you asked Senator McConnell's chief of staff if he was glad that McConnell was leaving and he said this sucks if or something? she was relieved that they're going to no longer be in leadership. Oh, because, God. And she smiled and was like, yeah, because, <laughs> hell yeah, she's yeah. relieved. Yeah, and, uh, just... Who would want to be a leader? Like I asked John Cornyn, a uh, Texas senator this week, who announced he's running to replace McConnell. I was like, why the fuck would you want that job? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that's I, the question. I, I get it. And and regarding Senator Gillibrand's thing about wanting more sensor systems and software and all that, yeah. have your people ask the Air Force about a program called Talon Thresher. It's a piece of software. You, you can go back and before. look at legacy yeah. things in the air. They should be asking about that. Well, to me, that the thing that really, I mean, this is my thing with lawmakers. Some of them, like what, I just had this with, uh, well, I mean, but like some of these lawmakers are babies. Like I got to help put on their diapers on this issue. And so <laughs> some of y'all oh got boy. PhDs and UAPs and I'm like, guys, I'm dealing with toddlers over here. Right. <laughs> like, God, they're just playing in spilled milk. Yeah. Yeah. Copy that. Okay. I know you have to be out of here at the top of the hour. So we are going to look, uh, we're going to listen to uh, Representative uh, Luna, uh, who, nice. yes, this is going to be an interesting one. Here we go. Discuss these things, you know that. Was that classified or? I'm sure we'll have field hearings. No comment. No comment? No it's comment. intriguing. Have a good one, ma'am. <laughs> and, and oh, did we lose him? I'm there. I'm oh, there. there you go. D did I cut some of the clip off or was it really only 22 seconds? Oh, it's short. Okay. I can okay. break news in one second on the Hill with one wink from the yeah. senator. <laughs> Copy um, that. So, so give us a summary of what you thought about what Luna had to say. I mean, to me, what stands out is the unspoken, what she couldn't say. I mean, what we have now from her and Gates is confirmed that they were in a classified setting, were briefed, and they do not disagree with my source who told me that they were shown video of bodies, recovered bodies, whatever that means. And so it was interesting when Matt Gates people reached out to me the next day, like his press secretary DM'd me because I had texted Gates that day asking for him to confirm or deny it. <laughs> like, that's my job, I'm not pro anything. I'm like, hey, tell me if this is bullshit. <laughs> because I don't want to spread bullshit. And then the next day, Gates, is people were like, hey, we're going to send you a statement. And part of me was like, oh, fuck. They waited this long, and now they're going to refute it? But nope, they didn't. They didn't say, Laszlo's full of shit. Why is he asking about bodies? Uh, that had nothing to do with our briefing. Nope. They just said, hey, it was a classified briefing. We had it, and we can't discuss it. So that's why if there's any whistleblowers out there, I'm on Signal. I'm on WhatsApp. I'm on Proton Mail. Um, uh, carrier pigeons are allowed to deliver to my mailbox. <laughs> Any way you want to get me sensitive info, uh, pass it our way. Which reminds me, I should get some insurance. <laughs> Probably so. <laughs> and if you're a whistleblower <laughs> listening, don't go to Arrow. <laughs> that that we we know that for sure. And just going back to to uh, uh, clown Kirkpatrick. I, if anything, I think the amount of net damage he did, and in my view, purposeful to Arrow, the one big takeaway is if I were a whistleblower and I had something to offer after 
I saw the clown show that, that uh, Kirkpatrick ran uh, and continues to run for CIA or somebody, I have no idea who, who is who is telling him to do all of this. But if I were a whistleblower, I'd be like, man, there's no way I'm going and testifying to Arrow yeah. after seeing what David Grush went through, seeing what yeah. these uh, bananas uh, debunkers are doing in a coordinated fashion, which pretty confident yeah. that they're getting paid to do this. Uh, it's, it's just insane. And I think that's the sense now, especially with senators who were active in creating Arrow, Gillibrand, Rubio, them, they're, rounds like they're for one let down but they're also pissed right uh and so we'll see if it's could it be salvageable last year at the end i started talking and there was more chatter about taking arrow out of the umbrella of the pentagon but senators you can tell they're disappointed because they're like yeah we thought of that in the beginning but you know you can tell the pentagon fought for it to be under them because they yeah. have all the power they can get but now it's like wait, do we give it one more shot with someone else? Can they repair what Kirkpatrick broke? No. Um, or, and that's where, because it's so new. <clears throat> yeah, I think lawmakers are starting to wrestle with that. Um, and yeah, they're frustrated. So we'll see I, what senatorial frustration looks like on UAPs once yeah, again. I, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Well, and the thing that's just nuts is that Kirkpatrick is still on some kind of advisory board for Arrow. If I, I don't, I, A, I don't understand that. Uh, B, why would he even want to do it? Uh, and C, how are the people in Congress agreeing to this uh, tomfoolery from this guy coming in and exerting some kind of uh, pressure on it? It's, it's insane. I'm, I'm going on a rant. Let's play your last, your last clip here with uh, cool. Congressman then, um, Tim. Go ahead. Do it and then I'm out. Okay, all right. I gotta go on another one. Yep, copy that. Man in demand. Okay, here we go. Uh, Tim Burchett. You familiar with the issue or is a lot yeah, of it yeah. here? Yeah, yeah and, 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 and the way I approach it to him was, look, we're spending, we spent literally millions of dollars on an issue that our government says does not exist. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yet, yet they, and, and you know, and now they're, I mean, they're telling us they don't exist, but then they won't show us what they found in those studies. So, Let's let's. Uh, that's the way I'm approaching it now to people in Congress because you know they don't want the stigma, the saucers, or the little green yeah. man. Although several of them have seen saucers. <laughs> did that? Did it feel like that resonated with Johnson? Very much so. He wrote it down. That's, yeah, that's a big with Johnson. If he, did, if he writes it down, it's uh, and I just need to follow up. But honestly, yeah. I mean, we got everything else going on in that committee. So. Yeah, especially. I get it. Um, how long did you meet Johnson? A good bit. He came to Knoxville. Yeah, I saw that. Just a bit. Good to see you. I got to pet this little lady. Hi, beautiful. Hi. Oh, I know. She's beautiful. Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> you got it, brother. Tim Burchette, come there on our go. show. I, you, you would be in friendly hands. Even though I'm a Democrat, I freaking love, love your work. Uh, come on anytime. Hey, all I right, I know you're Democrats and Republicans all the time. 100%. I despise both parties. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. Equal opportunity oh. hater. All right, before you have to go, any comments on that clip? Um, no, we just got the news. Uh, Speaker Johnson now fully, I mean, lawmakers for Chet particularly had brought up UAPs to him before, but now we know that he's. Well, Burchett reports that he's given a uh, green light to another in-person public hearing on Capitol Hill. Um, and that's on top of the field hearing that we broke the news of at askapoll.com that the UAP caucus still wants to have. So even though it's an election year, we might, I don't know, not, I phrased that wrong. This is still a nonpartisan issue, and that's kind of the beauty of it. It's it is way outside of the hyperpartisan bullshit that really has arrested this town, um, arrested to the point of paralyzation. And so, I could even see them doing more because, I mean, last time they had the classified skiff briefing last year, it was only a handful of lawmakers in there, you know, just members of the UAP caucus. Well, when they had one at the start of this year. Burchett told us there were 16 members inside, including 
AOC, you know, the head of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, and then Nancy Mace, a moderate Republican, and then members of the Freedom Caucus. Um, and so, and outside of that one, the previous one was only um, News Nation and us at askapoll.com. The second classified briefing, there was uh, CNN, Fox News, Axios. So the, the issue ain't going away. Like whatever you're trying to do to bury it is not working because <laughs> there's more working. lawmakers, more lawmakers are curious about it. Uh, and that's why I'm like, at one point, these lies or just the secretive nature of it has got to be blown apart because Congress is becoming a swarm of uh, frustrated flying insects. Copy that. I, I understand that completely. I I would I would agree with that. Well, hopefully Kirkpatrick will fly off and not come back. That's what that's what I hope uh, hope for. I now, hate to run, but I really you gotta, gotta go. go. All right, peace, wait, peace, wait. peace. Thank All right. you, y'all. Okay, thanks. You can get my stuff on the way out. Bye. There you go. Yeah, and we'll we'll make sure to put it on on uh, on our YouTube thing. Uh, so uh, I since we have this was obviously a very short interview. He. He had another interview to go hop on, but we're always happy to have him on our show. I love Matt Laszlo, that dude. He's, he's like my surfer brother from another mother. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions here. So first of all, Marley did it. Thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. Wondering if the same Kit, Grid, Kit Green video of bodies. I have no idea. I've never even seen that. Uh, another Super Chat from Shelly Montgomery. Really appreciate that. Uh, thanks, Matt and Matt. Keep talking. Let's see. Keep talking to everyone. Keep talking, everyone. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Uh, we have uh, we have another show coming up tomorrow. Uh, so just uh, go to our YouTube channel and please check that out. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for hopping on here. No, this was a very last minute thing. Again, if you like our show, please hit subscribe, thumbs up, all those things that all these YouTubers always tell you to do in their videos. It actually does work and it does help. And yeah, hopefully we will have a Schumer 2.0 that will hopefully have most of the provisions that were stripped out of the current thing. Thanks to uh, Mike Turner and his grubby little hands. I'm sure it was him. Uh, but who knows? And um, yeah, so we have David Grush's op-ed to look forward to. I understand that that is in the Dopser process still. So hopefully that will happen. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe he can make a call and say, hey, to Dobser, say, hey, you know, can you give the fast track treatment to Kirkpatrick or to me that you did a Kirkpatrick? That's what I would be wanting to know. And um, yeah, and hopefully these field hearings, I think that'll be good. But I think the thing that's clear is I think Everyone in the beginning was very sort of let down and deflated after the Schumer thing was defeated in the way that it was, or most of it being stripped out. But I think that everyone, let's be hopeful. I think that there are a lot of good things that will be coming down the pike. Clearly, lawmakers are engaged in this thing. Their staff is, uh, is uh, they are all engaged on this topic, and I, it's just not going away. That is for sure. Despite what the uh, debunkers are going to tell you, uh, they're paid to tell you that. So anyway, uh, see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.